Initially, I created Cable Doodle for my three-year-old. I was very influenced by all the ABC books I was reading to her. And simultaneously reading books to her, she was calling me Daddy Acorn. And she was prefixing everything with the word acorn. So I started to make her an ABC book. And the first letter in the ABC book was A is for anti-gravity acorn. And I didn't know what B was going to be. So what happened was I started culling words out of the dictionary that I actually didn't know what they meant. It seemed more exciting to me to work with words I had never heard before and bring a new vocabulary into the ABC world. What I did was I wanted to make something that was counterintuitive. I wanted to do something that was completely different. What happened with the teaching curriculum was completely serendipitous. I was approached by the Allentown Art Museum. They asked me if I would accept a grant. And what came along with the grant was I had to be an artist in residence in a local high school. I went to the school, I presented my paintings and my drawings and my book and my illustration pass to the high school kids. And serendipitously, 26 kids signed up to take a class with me. So I gave them the assignment that I gave myself. And each kid in the class got a letter. They read that section of the dictionary, found two words they didn't know, and they started to illustrate them. And as they were illustrating them, I treated the class the way any art teacher would treat a class where you try to teach kids a little bit about design, fundamentals about how to compose an image. And these kids were looking at these words and their imaginations were leapfrogged. And they were coming up with characters, doing things that were completely unintuitive and all the way out of the box. The first grant that I got brought me into the school. Everybody loved the results. They asked me if I would accept another grant. I went back to Panther Valley. Instead of 26 kids, they supplied me with like about 75 kids. 26 of the kids who are high school age went through the process of getting a letter, looking up words, creating an illustration that was character driven. 26 kids created illuminated letters to go with the characters. And then another 26 children that were elementary school age, eight and nine year olds, they created text to go along with the characters that the high school kids made. And what happened was the high school kids were mentoring the eight and nine year old kids. And they came up with some pretty sophisticated stories. I was like, start to cry, it was so terrific. When I heard them, I couldn't believe that all this stuff was being generated from this process of reading the dictionary. My experience working with the elementary students is really interesting and rewarding. They really took the project and took it to the next level. Whereas when, as the students get older, they kind of lose a little bit of that like creative spark that they had as children. And to see them working together with the high school students, it's just it's phenomenal. A lot of our struggles are getting kids to step away from their work and be prepared to change it. Um, a lot of times when a student is writing something, he or she has an ownership over it right away. There's a resistance to change. There's you know a thought process that this is mine and I liked it the way that it was. And I think through constantly manipulating their art pieces and through Victor's tutelage, I think that it's making them more open to you know, accepting criticism on their stories, to working <laughs> together, to being collaborative rather than judgmental. And I think that that is something that's really valuable because that's something that they can transcend to the classroom. It makes it such a cross-curricular event. You have kids of all different ages, all different backgrounds, working together for a collaborative cause that's so creative. Um, it's just very impressive to see how ingenious these kids really are and all their talent and skill. I think it's been unbelievable to see these kids work with such creativity, uh, teamwork. You have uh, mentors in the high school level working with these younger kids. They're thinking outside the box. They're working extremely diligently. Uh, and most importantly, they're enjoying the process. I think this is a memory that they will have for the rest of their lives. I told Mrs. Burkett last week, I said, this is the most enjoyment I've ever had teaching and working with kids. I think this has been an awesome experience and 
they have great leadership with uh, Mr. Stabin, Mrs. Burkett, and who knows, somebody might become a star through this. So it's been a complete blessing for them. I, I look forward to uh, seeing how it progresses in the future. The wonderful thing about working with the teachers of Panther Valley was Miss Kim Burkett, she wanted to make this into a book, which gave the kids a sense of accomplishment. To make the project even bigger and more important, not only were they now writing stories to their illustrations, but we now also want to make a book as a hardcover book, um, as a culminating project. And one other new thing is we're also exhibiting with Victor Staben, his one-man show at the Allentown Art Museum. He has invited us along uh, along with him to contribute our, our pictures, so we will also have our pieces, our student artwork, being shown at the Allentown Art Museum with his one-man show. So we'll be exhibiting for three months down at the Allentown Art Museum, so we're real happy. I had my first show in a strip mall in Queens, in an alley between two buildings. I debuted their work next to my work in the Allentown Art Museum. When it did make it into the museum, Nobody looked at this and said, this doesn't belong here. Everybody was applauding it. So the kids are available for this and they're hungry for it. The proof is in the pudding. Some of the kids got into this at a level that uh, they weren't used to. They got excited by it. I had uh, the letter N. It's Nabob, Nabarlik, Napafor, Mevis. And a Nabob is a wealthy man um, which I showed like, the, the money and um, the painting, you know, he has his crown and the monocle. And Nabarlik is a pygmy wallaby. He could tell, however, that I was in danger, so with one swipe of his mighty tail, he pushed me clear out of the whirlpool. Neither of us felt like this ocean was very safe anymore, so we both swam to the Pacific Ocean. We both had a really good time there. Learning new things about human <coughs> The project itself, the people around you, new techniques for drawing, just in general, it was stellar. This project was very fun to work on. It was an extremely great learning experience, and it was a great opportunity to learn something new about myself and all these other words, and I never really thought something like this I could be part of, but then I was, and I was, it was, just something really great. They came over and actually thanked me. I had kids coming over and saying, thank you, Mr. Staben. Thank you for doing this. This book that I created, I, I didn't know what its life would be, but I feel like, like this work has put my book into the circle of life. You know, this is just the beginning of something that is going to trip into something else and something else. And I want to thank all the kids for like, just bringing it to another place. But what's happening is, their inventions and their ideas as far as how they're composing like the environments that they're creating from these words are off the chart, they're as good as mine and some of the drawings and characters are so terrific that they could be turned into books, they could be turned into feature length animations they're just invention on top of invention totally unexpected that people would be able to conceive so brilliantly just by using a couple of reference words. And all you have to do is be open to the novelty of what you could be creating or what you are about to create. This is something that's worth pursuing. It doesn't cost anything. Everybody already has a dictionary. I think that drawing is one of the most fundamental ways of thinking. I think that using a pencil on a piece of paper and connecting it to vocabulary seems to be turning into something that could be a very common curriculum. I just think of books as magic and I think that this process of using the dictionary and seeding imagination could take you across the universe alphabetically. And if you don't believe me, ask Stanley Kubrick.